have gotten that. <laughs> that was fucking great. <laughs> hey, Anna. <laughs> what? I said, hey, Anna. Hey. What's going down? You're on the... <sighs> Recovery boat. <laughs> <laughs> but no. All right. So, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> so that cough I just did, what was that about? I got the, a question for you. The what? The cough. Was it the coronavirus? No. <laughs> I I cleared my throat before the pod like a true professional, and she's mad I didn't get it on air. Why did I want it on air? So the world can see my humanity. <laughs> <laughs> what was the background motive? I have no fucking clue. I'm oh so God. lost right now. Okay, so... A lot of the dumb things that we people do that's either funny or not funny, it's an act of attention. And it's something that's really hard for people to admit to themselves um, that, you know, just a lot of things like posting selfies, posting videos, funny videos. Uh, Posting a sad status, you know, like this, if that. So, it's in human nature to be desperate for attention. Or just want attention. Attention is a need that needs to be fulfilled in every human being. And in childhood, and this is just how I'm seeing it. Certain child, certain people in certain childhoods, they don't get that fulfillment. And um, I know I didn't. So I had some crazy ass ways of seeking attention. Um, just me, you know, you know, self harming and all that stuff. Like, yeah, it was to take the fucking emotional pain away, but. In reality, it was probably all an act of attention, you know? And there are some people who kind of take it to a whole nother extreme, which that's just a reflection of how much attention they have lacked in their childhood. So people like Takashi, they have really, really lacked it. And so they decide to just get it any way possible. They're addi- they become an addict of addiction. If, like, a lot of people become addicts of drugs, that was his drug. Or is. Mm-hmm. So watching him... You know, because he would jump onto anything and lose himself. He doesn't know who he is. His natal chair placements do not (laughs) fucking match the way he shows up. It's all fucking Earth Capricorn Taurus. I don't need to get into that. (laughs) But. Uh, What? Nothing. (laughs) You had me until you got to natal chair placement. I'm just kidding. Um. I'm not going to take it personally. I'm fine. So. Oh, I'm not taking things personally, too. I just had to work through a little piece of not taking something personally. What? Well, because I, I coughed to clear my throat. And then you start off this whole thing like, um, so some people just want attention. And I was I'm like, talking are about, you comparing me to 6'9 right now? I was talking about myself. Oh. See, so it's good I didn't take it personally then. <laughs> So, no, I I like how you said, like, addicted to attention, and it makes a lot of sense. Like, I I guess I did get a lot of attention growing up, because, like, we're opposites in every way. Yeah. So, like, I don't want attention, you know what I mean? I, I, I won't say I don't want attention. I don't crave attention. 
and the ways that I act that get attention, I truly just like to be, you know what I mean? So yeah. like, I've never, I, I <clears throat> definitely hit a point. Cause like in my family life, I got love, I got attention, I got all that stuff, but in socially I got none, but I didn't really want to do anything to get it. You know what I mean? Like I'd have my little spurts and moments where, damn, I guess I kind of did in high school you know, kind of dressing a little outside of the norm and, but not like, let me get all the attention, just let me get some. Right. But no, I think with him, like, um, I don't know, watching that documentary just really made a whole lot of sense to a lot of the shit that he's done. Like all this stuff that's mostly bad. It's mostly just something obscene mostly something just super toxic that he feeds off of. And it just got me thinking like how empty you have to be on a regular basis Mm -hmm. to feel fulfillment from that. You know what I mean? Like I get negative attention. It's almost like some people who just like to poke the bear, or like stir shit up at work with people just And they literally walk away feeling good about it. Like, yes, like people know I exist, you know, and and that's that can't come from a place other than. Low self-esteem or emptiness inside and that that feeling they get that gives them that sense of, oh, someone notices me or yes, I, 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 I had an effect here is always short lived. You know what I mean? So they get their little fix, I guess, for a minute for their attention addiction and then they leave and then they feel empty again. So they have to that that's the only way they know how to get it, Mm -hmm. because maybe when they were trying to do things the right way or be vulnerable. They it's, it's harder. It's like a slower burn. So they have to they have to, like, work at it and get a slower return on their investment, right? That's not like a supreme, it's not like a, a rush high that hits you fast and is super intense. It's like a, a buildup, but they're too impatient for that. And they just feel the emptiness. So anyway, they get used to doing these little, getting these big, huge spikes of adrenaline and attention and all this shit. And then when it goes away, the only way they know how to get it again is, doing the same thing you know what i mean yeah it just that just really reminds me of how my life was like because i you know i was i was a decent kid at first and i you know had some accomplishments and i got zero reaction out of people it was like well you can do better right so me being good Got zero reaction. So then I made a decision that, I mean, I I still need a fucking reaction. You know, I need something. Mm -hmm. So I'm like empty or whatever. So then I go off just flipping myself around, becoming like horrible. And I finally started getting reactions. So that's it. Like you said, him, you know, being vulnerable and stuff like that didn't work. So he had to try something different. But he's just like the magnified extreme of all those things. On top of that, very money driven. Right. That adds a whole nother layer of ego <clears throat> to it. Where it's like, oh, I can make money off of this. And that just becomes even more secured with it because you see the success, success, Mm -hmm. quote unquote, you see, um, just, yeah, the money coming in. So then it becomes an addiction. Yeah. Like when we were watching the show and I'm just thinking about it and I'm like, all the things that, that seem to pull his attention and basically all the things that he desires are all outside of himself. Mm -hmm. It's the money. It's the attention of other people. It's 
the notoriety of being regarded as this big figure. You know what I mean? It's it's all ego, obviously. But it's also just how do I fill up this hole inside of myself from the outside? Yep. You know, and that's what people seem to like struggle with when they when they are so focused on external success. You know, what new car is going to make me feel complete? What house? What trophy wife? What position at work? You know, and it becomes mm-hmm. this just chase for more because they're trying to fill a hole inside themselves with the wrong ingredients. Like, because all the same ingredients are is distraction. Uh, I'm just I'm focused on a mission that is going to be my savior point. You know, like when I get this, I'll be happy when. So their destination addiction or um, the rush, the temporary like relief of getting that new toy, getting that new label and wearing it for a minute. You get the warm foot, you get that high, you know, you get that spike, that rush and that high. And then that high fades like. Okay, I got this CEO job. And then they start looking around again. They're cool for a minute, but then they look up and see fucking Tesla. And they're like, well, I'm not up there, you know? So then the, then the climb starts again. Like, okay, I'm, I, I reached my goal. I could be content. If I was being mindful and realistic, I could look back and see like I'm a thousand times further than I was when I started. My needs are met, you know? My shit's taken care of, but I'm empty again. So now what do I have to do to fill my void? So they always keep looking up thinking the next step is going to be that. That savior, you know, and it's not because the you can't fill the hole inside yourself from the outside. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you don't feel like you're good enough just the way that you are without these things. Um. I can completely understand the whole, like, seeking external things, like, of people. Uh, like, everything comes from, you know, our childhoods. Where a boundary is crossed, and you feel like you've been pushed into that whole dynamic of we are all, like, you know, up each other's asses. And you lose yourself in it immediately. So you had that, you had yourself, you know, you were happy with yourself. And that just got pulled away from you because you being authentic, you expressing yourself was not good enough. So that shit gets, you get blended in with all the other people in the household and then you grow up and you're constantly seeking that again because it was always there. You used to its familiarity. And then as you get older, you realize, well, shit, nobody's always going to be there up your ass. You always need somebody up your ass and people are just not there anymore. And it's like, what do you do? You got to like get yourself back. It's like, But how do you get yourself back? Whether it is people or, you know, materialistic things. The only way to get back into yourself is to get back in touch with yourself. Connected. Which is your emotions, your... The awareness of your thoughts and emotions that come from it. So. And yeah, and just like attention, right? You don't... You don't give yourself... enough space to to feel what you need to feel because you're so stuck in your addiction you know what i mean you're stuck in that cycle of seeking attention getting it relieved losing it detoxing Mm -hmm. withdrawing craving i need attention you know what i mean so same with using like it takes a point of desperation it takes a, a, a a bottom you know what i mean for someone to be like this is not working like you you almost have to get to the point where the drug doesn't work anymore you hit a a bottom you lose things in your life you you have like serious consequences 
And then and only then do you stop and take a look and say, this might be a problem, right? So these people that seek attention like this, they if they don't hit that point, they don't have time and space to reflect, to stop and say, this might be a problem because they're too busy either riding the next high or chasing the next fix. You know, mm-hmm. like, it's it's just, there's, so, and as long as it's working for them, they're not going to do that. They're not even going to stop. You couldn't even sit them down like an intervention and say, dude, you are lost in yourself. You are lost in this cycle. You are lost chasing all the wrong things because they don't see it. They're going to see the high. They're going to see the rush. They're going to be blinded by their ego. They're going to be lost and identified with their thoughts. And they're just going to be honed in and you that you just can't see it. Just like an addict when they're when they're in the thick of their addiction and it's not going absolutely horribly. They love getting high. They like their lifestyle. Uh, You try to sit them down. They're going to tell you you don't get it, you know, or, or they're fine. And maybe there's little bits of of negative side effects. But in the grand scheme of it to them. Those don't outweigh the benefits enough to say that that's the problem or to actually make the change. So the same with these attention seekers, like, sure, there's negative side effects from it, but the rush they get is what they're more honed in on. So they're like, I need this rush. I need this. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Or they'll be like, let me just find a new way to do it. You know, let me okay, this wasn't working and this caused a side effect. It's not me chasing attention to fill a void in myself. It's just that one instance that I did that one thing. So let me just not do that one thing again. And then they're going to try something else and it'll probably work for a while. But they're always going to end up back in the same place because they can't fill that emptiness like that. You know? Yeah, the whole, like, taking space for yourself thing, I never understood it until recently because of the whole, like, having, you know, not knowing boundaries, not understanding because of the environment I grew up in. It's like, if you just not constantly act on what's what emotion, like, whatever, like, thing that happens to you, it's like this is the truth, and you have to act on it, but that's not true. You know, right. you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, you can, you are allowed to take a moment to yourself and to calm down. Because that, when you get, like, in your emotions and stuff, it's not who you really are. But that's hard for someone to do when they're in the thick of it. No, I know. I know that's. Yeah, like they're so lost in their thoughts. They're the feelings, you know, like when you when you wake up from that high and you gain a little bit of awareness again. Your your awareness is too lost on either finding the next high or being overwhelmed at just the sight of your own awareness. Yeah, like when somebody is constantly like. You know, if I woke up and I got awareness in the middle of my shit that was happening in my addiction, I would probably kill myself, Mm. which I mean, I almost did anyways, several times. But it's like. If I was if, you know, people in in the midst of it, when they become aware of the shit that they've been doing. It's almost unbearable. Unless you learn about the whole thought disidentification first. And really get to a good place with that, which that was the very first thing I had to do before I, well, I don't know, it's hard to say with me, but yeah. But something somebody said at the meeting yesterday, it was something like, um... You can't change something if you can tolerate it. Mm. So if you can continue to tolerate your bullshit, you're not going to want to, you know, if it, 
if it works for you in any way, like, if you continue to get a little bit out of it, you know, just kind of, if it's not, like, completely unbearable, like, you will not change. Right. Because it's familiar, it's your comfort zone, you don't know better, and you don't want to know better because it's, it works a yeah. little bit. Or even if it doesn't work, yeah, it's not, it's not so bad that I have to, like, step into the scary unknown. Right. So, and it wasn't, like, I mean, I'm sure it was for everybody like this, but for me, like, it wasn't until I got to a point where I realized it's completely unbearable. And everybody has a different standard of unbearable. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I still had control over my ex. I had control over people. Fucking, you know, I could have still gotten anything out of anybody, but I could i could not bear myself right i could not bear of just getting things come to me so easily i had like absolutely i just felt so empty and for me that was unbearable now other people they have to hit rock bottom where they lose you know their family their job you know house whatever stuff like that everybody has a different degree of tolerance i guess yeah and that's what probably makes it hard for like the attention seekers and the pot stirs because there's always more attention to seek right especially if you're attracted to negative attention like you can always find it like you you probably will only get it get you'll only hit that bottom that empty bottom if you like go to jail or just end up becoming completely irrelevant like getting so old that you're just kind of lost and forgotten and written off as like oh he's just grumpy old man or whatever um but as long as you're able to like kind of evoke these strong emotional reactions out of people you're gonna get exactly what you want so yeah i mean like you you just have to suffer like a significant loss or hit like a major bottom but like just people turning on you or disliking you or hating you isn't going to that almost still just continues to give you what you want but yeah like everybody bottom is different like <sighs> that's why enablers need to stop <laughs> <laughs> like enabling will kill the addict <laughs> But also enablers have their own diseases. You know, they got their yeah. own addiction to being needed. You know, enablers are addicted to, you know, the peace or the familiarity of the dealing with the addict. Like, you know, so just as much as someone stays in a toxic relationship or someone, you know, as long as they can tolerate their enabling, that's a it's asking a lot to ask an enabler to take the hard road make the hard decisions stand firm and be assertive when half the time a lot of people i know who aren't enablers have a hard time doing that you know what i mean so that kind of comes back to the other um the same thing like what stage of change are you in and and how how tolerable is this dysfunction in your life right yeah no, yeah, the enabler and the addict dynamic is extremely toxic because the codependent is, like, addicted to the feeling of ne being needed and the addict is addicted to the feeling of being everything ha handed to him. So that cycle is hard to break. Yeah, and it takes a lot to step up. Like, how have you ever, how, how many times have you, like, stayed at a job that you really didn't like? Not just because, you know, it's not wise to just walk out on a job as soon as you dislike it, but I know there were quite a few jobs I stayed at. Like, I didn't actively search for a job right when I got out of there. You know, I could have looked in some of my, like, off hours for a new job, but I stayed because it was, it, I didn't like it, but it was tolerable. Right. You know what I mean? How many times have you stayed in a relationship that sucked because yep. it's tolerable and you whether whether you're lost in a fantasy, you think it's going to change one day, or it's just absolutely tolerable, and that's it. You know, like, 
I like that quote. Like, I'm glad you re brought it back up. Cause like when I heard it yesterday, I heard it before cause he texted it to me like the day before, but then brought it back up in the meeting and just you bring it up again, just kind of like, no, that shit expanded another me layer. Up. I'm like, Phew. yeah. Cause that could be applied to anything in your life. Like, because we all, you know, there's so many factors to this equation. You have um the different standards of tolerance. You have the different, um, I guess, there's just different aspects. Like, you could even, you know, like with my school stuff, I decided I felt it's an it's not tolerable for me to continue to be so hard on myself yeah so i have to stop that yeah. or you know some people like it's intolerable for them to just continue to get by on minimal effort or you know feel like they're plateauing and just want to you know like even non-addicts or just like man what am i doing with my life you know, things like that. Yeah, like it really takes a lot of intolerance to really make a change. You know what I mean? Like something can kind of suck. You're not going to have that same energy behind you to say, oh, hell no, this has to stop. Like, I don't care what the unknown holds. I don't care that I, I see a whole bunch of like struggle in making this decision this has to be made because staying is not an option. You know what I mean? Yeah. And tolerance is kind of a blessing. That's why they call it like a gift of desperation. Right. That That's pretty much the same thing. And I hate when people are like, well, like you're dumb for learning from your own mistakes. Like smart people learn from other people's mistakes. And it's like, it just, it's so hard to just look at somebody and like, they do something a certain way and like it doesn't work for them and it's like well I need to try it myself I need to get to the point of intolerance myself right to understand that so yeah that's something I really try to remember with dealing with people like we're all at different stages of the game we all have different tolerance levels you know, like some people I'll see in shitty relationships are still using and they and they seem miserable to me, but they just must not be that miserable enough to say, OK, yeah, I'm miserable in this relationship. But the thought of being on my own seems more miserable to me. You know what I mean? Like or yes, it yeah. sucks ass compared to a decent or good relationship. It's absolutely horrible. But maybe compared to what I know or what I can tolerate, like on a day to day basis, yeah, I'm unenthused. Yeah, I'm just finding ways to check out and make it to the end of the day just to wake up and do it again. Yeah, I don't feel like I even fucking like this person, but it's tolerable. I, I can survive through the day, you know, and then maybe imagining this unknown, like being alone for years or paying all the bills by myself like those things are things that are more scary to them than just sucking it up and and sacrificing a little bit of self-esteem and and happiness to you know what i mean yeah oh <sighs> well there's one good thing though about um dealing with things until you absolutely can't tolerate them anymore people will keep listening until we're absolutely intolerable <laughs> That's fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised they're still listening. Hi, Eric. Hey, Wes. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. We got two. How do you know they're going to fucking listen to this one? Oh, How do you they, know they've already uh, not got sick of our uh, shit? One probably already dipped. They're like, fuck these guys. <laughs> but no, like, I, I really like this one. This This whole concept of, you know, being addicted to attention, it's... It seems like, <clears throat> I don't know, it, for some reason, talking about it here like this, 
makes me really look at it as an addiction. And like, I, I, I feel like I've mm-hmm. known before this moment that people who seek attention are addicted to attention, but I never looked at it like an addiction, like saying, oh, I'm addicted to cookies, like, you know, something like that. Oh, I'm addicted to TV. But like, no, these attention seeking is a is a addiction. Yes. And it's a heavy one. And it's one of craving, chasing highs, lows, withdrawals, um, you know, fuck, man, making questionable decisions that go beyond, you know, common sense logic, you know, when you're craving the attention, basically craving the drug, you will make decisions that you wouldn't make when you aren't craving the drug or when you're at peace and high from the drug. So like these people, when they're, when they're getting the attention they need, they're probably making better decisions because they're not acting on impulse and craving but when they don't have the attention and they feel that void and that craving and that emptiness and that withdrawal they will go to these extremes to get their fix and and that shit man we have to look at it like almost like an addict chases the next fix like once you take that first drug you don't have a choice anymore you know And when people are chasing with that unconsciousness of the craving of their attention, they're not really as in control and self-aware as we may see them from the outside Mm -hmm. because they're in the middle of their trigger and their craving. Yeah, dude, attention is, it's fucking dangerous because, like, I've... I have done some things where I've put my life in, at risk just for that. I, I, would, I would put that before my own life. Right. And, you know, the whole thing on daddy issues. That's just an issue of somebody not having, like, a dad around to give them the male attention so they try to get it anywhere else. So, yeah, basically addiction is just seeking something that we have lacked. And just because there wasn't enough of it given, you can never get enough of it back. Hmm. (laughs) But I do feel like there are ways. I don't feel like that destines someone to be that way forever. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that is. I'm just throwing that out there because... hearing you say what you said i was like okay well i just i'm just counterparting it yeah so i wanted to like say more about it okay (laughs) um that so people with that with those problems they're correlated with codependency Mm -hmm. like a hundred percent so um the whole the idea of attention seeking is the idea of relying on somebody for something which is like external of themselves either getting too much or lack of all right so daddy issues right and we don't have to go too deep into them but i mean i got some this chick's got some because like all right, so I was watching, I was scrolling on Reddit, and it was a different podcast, I don't know the name, who was talking about uh, Instagram, fi- like, show or following or something that I also don't know the name of. But it was like an adult baby, right? So this chick, I don't know, 30, likes to get pushed on the swings, acts like a little kid, has a teddy bear. Mm. Um, I mean, bottles, she's got pacifiers, she's got like the little kid bed and really, so the whole thing, like she is a baby calls her boyfriend, daddy. It's just the whole thing. Right. And, um, it just got me thinking of kind of like what you just said a minute ago where you're like, okay, that, that feeling you never had, you're constantly seeking to get right. And I just feel it's such an extreme case in some people like this person Mm -hmm. who needs to constantly recreate this 
scene that she's missing from her childhood, Michael Jackson is kind of another example. You know, a lot of people thought he had stuff like that where he just didn't have a childhood. So he had to recreate it to get little bits of these pieces he didn't get as a child, but he's also trying to get them in his adult life when he's damaged, conditioned, um, and seeking something that's not there for him to get. So he's trying to make it probably getting little moments of relief, but then that is always going to go away because it's not, it's not like it's, it's a missing piece. You know what I mean? And and when we have a missing piece, it almost becomes like a black hole. Like mm-hmm. you fill it with something, it's gone. You fill it, it's gone, you know? And before that piece gets broken as a kid, it's not missing. So you get it and you're like, okay, cool. And I think the longing for it as a kid, or once you grow up and know better, is where that piece becomes missing. And that's probably due to comparison to other people. Like, this isn't right because this is how others are. So this is the way the world should be, or I should have been. That's where the pieces come from. It comes from our interpretation of what's right and wrong. This shouldn't have happened to me. I should have had this, even though you didn't. You know what I mean? Like if a baby rhino grows up and his mom wasn't around, he doesn't care. He's just like, oh, hey, dad and um, other rhinos. Right. So when we grow up and learn about the world and we say, damn, other people's moms like hug them. Other people's moms like don't throw things at them. Then our interpretations kind of judge what is right and what is wrong. And that's not to say there's not valid reasons to be upset, feel like you're missing something, whatever. But I feel like so much of these things come from the comparison. So anyway, like trying to fill this bottomless pit, this black hole is is a never ending journey. You can't fill it. You can't recreate the scenarios even forever in your life. You could get 50 boyfriends who shower you with everything you ever want from all of them and just keep that constant black hole being filled. It will always run out again because filling it isn't the way to get it healed. You know what I mean? You almost have to... I don't know what the exact answer is, but you almost just have to reframe what that black hole is like you have to think it into a different existence like Mm. does that make sense no yeah that's that is really good shit because like i've thought about it before but i didn't think about like the whole thing like that because i because after ever since i started getting into like the codependency stuff i the whole like inner child thing healing it was like your inner child is sitting there waiting for an adult to save them which is what I'm always like talking about is Mm -hmm. like oh when I'm triggered I get into that state where I'm a little girl and I'm waiting for somebody to help me but it's like nobody is ever gonna come and save me so I have to be that adult that comes and saves me and that goes for you know it's like whatever like you said whatever we don't get as children that we were supposed to the need that does not get filled does turn into a black hole if we run with it if we if we identify with it so it's that level of you know, identification, like, you know, Michael Jackson probably just fucking took off with it. Right. And for me, it was like just clinging on to anybody who can come give me all that love and attention I've been dying for. So it's just about just like you said, understanding that You know, I was supposed to have this and I didn't get this. Well, just need to accept that I didn't get it and that I'll never get it. It's the acceptance that 
that need will never be filled the how it was supposed to back then and just get out of get past that point in the past and just not sit there and be stuck on it because here in the present moment do I really need an adult to come help me and save me and love me no I'm good but I'm stuck in that child mode right kind of like that girl stuck in the child mode of getting pushed on the swing and drinking out of baby bottles so yeah man i almost interrupted to put my little next flip on it but you kind of got there yourself like because i was thinking about it while you were talking like you know you were thinking you're waiting on someone to come save that little child but then you said like oh it's like i need someone to come save whatever you, it's good to reframe it like maybe that person doesn't need to be saved you know what i mean instead of oh i'm a little girl someone needs to save me no i'm an adult and i'm looking for someone to save me reframing that like that child doesn't need to be saved you know what i mean you're not who you are without that child going through what it went through i just called you an it thanks <laughs> um but yeah i mean so Man, it's crazy how all these things connect because like even how I keep referencing the uh, the rhino, right? Like because I just read that randomly from that book earlier when we were sitting about to eat. Like I'm just like the animals don't know what's right or wrong. They just are like without mm -hmm. humans, without self-awareness and without, you know, the our our thoughts. Everything just is plants, animals um the fucking planets it, you know a planet could be made with a huge freaking dead on it. yeah <laughs> it it doesn't sit there going oh look at the other planets look at earth it's got water and shit look at me with my little fucking gimp <laughs> ring like it, it flexes that gimp ring and it says bitch my gimp ring shines <laughs> you know <laughs> nobody makes fun of the gimp ring <laughs> But <laughs> no, we just yeah, that's funny. Oh but God. yeah, but I mean, like animals that are born with three legs and, and the other ones have four, like, do they face ridicule? Do they walk around with shame or do they just move on with their lives? Like, do they adapt? Do, do they live within their limitations? You know, do they do the other ones huddle up and make fun of them? You know what I mean? Like, it's it's we we do a lot of this ourselves and. You know, just because we also we also have a responsibility here to accept that we do have awareness, to accept that we do have egos, and to accept that we live in a land full of self awareness and egos. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we we need to know these things so we know how to navigate in the world. I need to know that there is a need inside of me to seek attention. I need to know that there is a, a need inside of me to compare to other people, that there is a need to seek safety and, and to crave and want things to have gone differently. If I don't acknowledge that that exists, it's going to happen one way or another subconsciously, right? So like even saying like, oh, these plants and animals like don't judge themselves and shit. Well, that is what is, right? But with us being able to judge ourselves and other things, that also is what is. So even if the bad things are happening, even if I'm stuck in the land of what not is, I'm still is. So really, that still is what's supposed to be is. I'm stuck in the land of not is, I'm still is. The land of not is, is just. Is, is. The land of is, not is, is, is. That's the name of the pod. <laughs> <laughs> no like the so addiction just comes from inability to get past what just fucking happened yes like oh man like that moment really sucked um I'm gonna go use about it whether it's big or small you know whatever I mean each 
thing that has happened to us is very big to us, and it's all a matter of perspective. If someone cheated on me one time, I'm never trusting anybody again. Yep. But yeah, it's it's all it all boils down to feelings, dude. Like feelings are the source of everything. If you if you get your feelings hurt bad enough and you decide to work up a defense mechanism to never feel again, that will come back and bite you in the ass and if you decide to get better and you know, recover from everything, you just got to get back in touch with your feelings and accept them like And it's it's hard, but that's the best thing you can do for yourself. That is that is how you are being with yourself, being there for yourself, loving yourself, and just allowing yourself to enjoy everything in life. I don't know. I feel like everything balances out, too. So, like, when it comes to all these things, internal, external, um materialistic feelings, thoughts. I feel like everything finds a way to somewhat balance. So the people who, you know, go outside of themselves, they find, you know, the labels, they find the prestige, they find the money, they find the popularity and attention. They pay for that with their internal. Like, let's say you have an aura. And it can be all inside yourself. You could be the Buddhist monk who wears one robe every day of his life and lives in the middle of a grass field. Or you can be, you know, the Trumps of the world who have all of the money, all of the power, all of the everything, right? But this person with all the external, you know, energy probably has poor internal energy. You know what I mean? And... So less self-awareness, self, less reflection, less just all that stuff. You know, and that's not to say they have none, but I just feel like I feel like things balance like that, because when you're driven by the external world and you're chasing these things like Takashi, all this attention from other people, he's not worried about finding inner peace. He's not worried about thought identification. They they live by their thoughts. They have a thought, a new idea, something that's going to get them what they want, and they run with it. Mm-hmm. They probably don't have a lot of compassion for other people. They probably don't stop and think, hmm, is this choice going to harm someone? Is this choice going to, you know, have a bad result? Like, they'd probably look on paper if they could read into the future. And I'm not speaking on either of these two people I referenced. I'm just looking at their I their identities on paper from what I've seen of them could probably say, well, I'll get like, I'll, I'll go from being the 10th most popular person in this world and richest to the first, but a million people might, might hit tragedy along the way. And they probably don't stop to think if that's a worth it, you know, like a worthy trade, they'll just do it because they're so driven by their ego and their own wants and desires that they'd probably make that choice and not even look back and feel bad about it and feel the remorse or feel the regret. Like I wouldn't be able to make a choice like that. If you said you could have the number one podcast tomorrow and the number one album, Mm -hmm. but you'd have to like a hundred people would die that you've never heard of over there. I I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to enjoy what I did. But some people will look and say, oh, fuck, that's a that's a small sacrifice because I know when I get this big, powerful position, I'm going to fucking save the world. So it gets justified. And like that's that's an internal external imbalance. Yeah. I don't know where all this shit's coming from today. I'm just having like these little light bulbs. It's because I meditated this morning. Yeah. For the first time in a long time. Aren't you glad I was like, let's pause? Yes, I really am. We bring out such good shit together. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, they're just... When you lack self-awareness, like, it just... You... When there's no awareness, 
all you see is yourself. You don't see anybody else in this world. You see everybody else as things that are like characters of your story and your story is the only one that exists so like your perception is like just narrow and limited to just you so everything you do is for to make yourself feel better and that perception gets narrowed due to like just having a huge amount of negative emotions trauma and all that stuff you feel like the world took things away from you so you feel like you need to take the whole freaking world back right and you will take it and you will take it because you feel like everything was taken from you You, the light in your eyes the love in your heart all that shit so yeah you want to feel like you're in power and control so you do that. But when you become aware, you understand, you start understanding that, no, the world didn't take everything from you. It's just how things happen. And, you know, whoever was that in your life that made an impact on you, they also, you know, had their own pain and whatever. Mm-hmm. And you start seeing that there are other people in this world and you're not special. And that you just you just start thinking about other people and not just yourself. And I know that sounds cheesy, but no, not at all. Your perception gets widened, and you start seeing the whole world as a whole, and caring for other people and caring for yourself. No, oh, that like just saying that last part just took me to like a momentary flashback of how I felt when my when I was like pre-awareness and like I remember I always had the biggest grandiose ideas as far as being famous being rich being just powerful and popular and I remember feeling that the world wasn't enough like literally it was like okay you could be like the next Eminem that's not enough, though. I need to be, like, the next Jesus. You know what I mean? Like, yep. seriously, like, huge. Like, I need to be so astronomically special. I am a one of one. I am, like, literally, I, I, I literally my whole life felt like I was different. You know what I mean? Than every, anybody else. And, like, it's true to a degree. You know, I am different. I have my own thoughts and experiences, but I'm not special. You know what I mean? And there was a time where I either believed I was or I, I needed to be anything less than ultimate was not good enough. And it didn't really affect me a lot, but it did. So like I wasn't like sulky about it or causing problems, but I internally inside my heart and my spirit, I felt that. So, yeah. And and it, it comes with the opposite, you know, and that's back when I looked outside myself for everything. I didn't even know there was an internal. So, like, that's another level of self-awareness where, like, people don't get this shit. I need to understand that better because I I remember when I didn't get it. Like, old me, seven years ago, six years ago, listening to this shit. Y'all are some hippies. You don't know <laughs> what you're talking about. <laughs> 